Hello everyone and happy holidays. I'm back with a somewhat long hibernation and you can blame the sorrows of work and procrastination at its finest, but I wanted to at least do one more solid video before this pandemic year wraps up and to do so I wanted to do my first music review with the topic of interest being for the top or I should say best songs of 2020. This is going to be a lengthier video and I already know it is so I just want to get right into it but first by explaining a few things about my choices for these picks. Number one, think of this video as some of my picks for some of the best material I have been blessed enough to hear and they are all recommendations for anyone who wants to diversify themselves and discover a new song or artist that they may have never heard of. The ranking in number carries some weight of the quality of the song obviously but regardless Regardless, these 50 songs are all quality music recordings. Number two, I'm only doing one artist per song just to furthermore allow other artists to respectively shine and there was quite a lot of great material this year so it's better just to show everyone off. And three, I hope you enjoy. The way I perceive music reviews always is that if I can just recommend even one song that you end up really loving, then that memory will forever be attached to that song in person and that's one of the best feelings and one of the best merits I can wish for. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off with the coveted 50th spot, I have a long way past the past with Seattle indie folk rock band Fleet Foxes. The group comes with another hypnotizing, peaceful folk rock piece about the longing of not letting a past relationship wither out with amazing trumpet accentuations and emotionally turmoiled lyrics that showcase Fleet Foxes doing what they do best, which is sad people indie music. At number 49 comes the underacknowledged queen of pop, and that's Carly Rae Jepsen with Felt This Way. Carly sings dearly about feeling alone with someone and questioning your feelings but still accepts them regardless of the other person's attraction. It's a b-side song that's A plus in its electro dance simplicity, thoughtful lyrics, and catchiness that only Carly continues to dominate in her lane. At 48 I have a rework of an older song and that's Tokyo Hotel with their song Monsoon 2020. This is a rework that takes the same song and revamps it with an additional kick drum and heavier synthesizers with a cool and collected Bill Collins still leading the vocals. At the number 47 spot is singer-songwriter Laura Marlin with her song Held Down which brings back a nostalgic, harmonious 2000 sound. It's open and barren with Laura pouring herself into one hell of a chorus and singing beautifully about not wanting to let a partner down with an elegant focus. At 46, we have one of the most beloved psychedelic rock bands today and that's Tame Impellas with their song Lost in Yesterday. It's an effortlessly catchy, psychedelic pop, funk, 80s groove song that's uncharacteristically Tame Impala at their best with the memorable hook, impeccable mixing, and wistful vocal performances that are distorted. Coming up at number 45, I've got XXL newcomer Moneybag Yo. This is a hard-hitting trap record that starts off with a bang just three seconds in and it never lets that explosive energy die down until the song's finished. It's concise with a fun flow and lyricism from Moneybag and features this weird, spacey, atmosphere production and background that I love. At number 44 comes a rising pop star who gives one of the most unapologetically fuck you songs this year and that's Halsey's You Should Be Sad. This country pop ballad is a mess of angry emotions, devastating songwriting, and all in all an anthem for women to grow off better from their previous relationship. While Halsey never directly mentioned G-Eazy as the source of this song, it does make it hilarious to just see Halsey telling a hundred pound G-Eazy stuff like, no you're not the half the man you think you are, or lyrics like, I'm so glad I never had a baby with you. It's like, Yikes, dude. At number 43 is another indie folk song of an apt blend of reality and dreaminess, and that's Waxahachie's Can't Do Much. This is a love song at its essence, with Katie Crutchfield pouring her heart out in a stream of consciousness style of lyricism. It's beautiful, earnest, it's breezy, and straightforward. At the number 42 spot, I have Toronto based experimental pop group US Girls and their song for American Dollars. This song shimmers with an effervescent 70s sound while lyrically describing this, the troubles of living in our our current modern day money hungry society. It features a carelessly catchy hook and brings back again a certain nostalgic and funk sound within it's a bopper that I've always come back to. At number 41 is a relatively massive collaboration between similar genre artists and that's In This Moment We Will Rock You Where You Work which also gets help from the Pretty Reckless's lead singer Taylor Momsen and Hailstrom's lead singer Lizzie Hale joining on this cover. The trio give it a gritty, slow, aggressive grunge rock sound that combines all three of their vocal prowesses and delivers another organic anthemic piece that can carry its own against the original work. Moving into the 40s, this is a song from a trio group that I actually happened to just randomly stumble upon earlier this summer while I was exploring another similar sound. 
and it's disappear here by a dollar underwater. Shout out to these three gentlemen for that compose this synthwave masterpiece. It's gorgeous, mesmerizing, and a fittingly night drive song. It's a slow record that sounds like it's continuously moving at 80 miles per hour, oozing with brilliant sprinkles of synth and a powerful chorus and a tone of optimistic hope. Next up at number 39 comes one of the most consistent rap groups of this decade, and it's no other than Run the Jewels with their song Just. It's an intelligent rap song with an impeccable beat, whether it's the production from Pharrell or Zach DeLaRoche is killing it for even though he's 50 years old and still having relevant lyrics to our current world. Strong imagery underlying an even stronger message. Everything is just fantastic. At number 38 is another XSL newcomer, rapper, singer, Don Tolliver with his song Euphoria. I imagine when Don Tolliver saw himself, he saw himself as a conductor waving his hands around because he was orchestrating a hit here. The autotune in this song is an exemplary work of how to utilize the feature to its most complementary attributes. And Don Tolliver and Kashi Page shine and blend together like mixing blue and red to get this saturated purple with Travis in full support. At number 37 is house hitmaker Duke Dumont with his song Love Song. It's less than a handful of words totally spoken here and yet Duke is able to create a calm yet energetic as hell house banger. The song never overstays its welcome at over five minutes and it's able to convey a range of emotions just from its beat. It's bold, it's loud, and it knows exactly what it wants to do, if nothing more than an immensely dynamic house song. At number 36 is a newer goth punk rock band hailing from England, and that's Creeper with their song Annabelle. This song just gives you chills from its chorus with some possible My Chemical Romance influence. I love the ah, ah background continuing in here along with the total power and just gratification this song presents. At 35 comes one of the most acclaimed leaders of coke rap and it's Freddie Gibbs with his song Frank Lucas, a sinister piece with horrorcore elements in his production and yet it's a beat that has you doing a stank face like the entirety of its run. Benny the Butcher comes in, slaughters, leaves, and the two have an equivalent amount of chemistry between them that leaves you wanting more. Credible flows, rhyme schemes, and a mastermind producer just gives us Freddie another hit of his collection of hits. 34 comes right after 35. Shout out to Ariana for teaching me some math, but unfortunately the song is not for her. It's for Disclosure and Chanel Trey with their song Lavender. This is a banger. This is a heat seeker. This is peanut butter and jelly in a sandwich form. It's a well-written groove, UK garage that takes all these artists and combines them into this kaleidoscopic disco club essential. At number 33 is a refined and laid back piece from Canadian music composer Caribou who gives us his peaceful song You and I. Mixing bedroom pop with trap, Caribou produces this ambitious electronical work while featuring some melancholic falsetto singing from himself. It's a song that contrasts its tones and textures all throughout but still always comes back to its distinctly pleasant melody. In at number 32 comes Soccer Mommy with a heartbreaking, dark, melancholic work called Yellow is the Color of Her Eyes. Mixing elements of dream pop with 80s alternative, it's long, beautiful, and dreadful, brilliant work. You can tell she put her thoughts to paper on this one, found the proper melancholic tone to portray its message, and delivered it with finesse and a beautiful glam rock closing. At 31 comes Norwegian experimental electronica band Over with Machine Guns and Peacock Feathers. The song is a master of groovy drenched synths with plucked with guitar notes that carry the song into this pure night driving bliss. The lead singer's vocals are perfect for this song and the ridiculous title is a surprisingly one of the catchiest things you'll hear this year. Closing out the 30s, at number 30 comes Lil Uzi Vert's Pop. Pop is it's an extravagant intergalactic song with high energy, high charisma, colorful production, a frenzy of lyrics, and the only artist who can get away with repeating the word Balenci 10 times in a row and make it sound natural and appropriately fitting for the song. It's high caliber Uzi having fun and having focus all in one tone. At number 29 comes the arguable king of songwriting, and of course I'm referring to Bob Dylan with his song, I Made Up My Mind To Give Myself To You. Even at over 75 years old, Bob Dylan is still the best at giving us gorgeous, powerful, and vibrant songs that don't need anything crazy to make it incredible. His voice ages like fine Berman, and his presence in a song is like someone just waiting for you with open arms. Don't ever underestimate a genius in his lane. At number 28 comes Bring Me the Horizon with their song Kingslayer taking the spot. Bring Me the Horizon has dominated the metalcore scene as of recent and this collaboration with Japanese kawaii metal band Baby Metal is an unexpected abrasive hit. It's one of those collabs you don't really think you need until you listen to both parties and they're focused, they're loud, they're ferocious, vicious, any adjective you want to use for aggressive. You want a gym song that takes you over? 
This is the one. At 27, we come to Rock and Roll Legends ACDC with their song Shot in the Dark. It's the prime of example, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. ACDC just delivers a song in 2020 that still sounds like them at their peak of peaks. Brian Johnson's voice is as solid as it was, is back in black and the melody is captivating and the fire is still burning for classic rock and roll. Next up at 26 comes Charlie XCX's Party For You. Charlie took the time to create an electro pop, hyper pop banger with bouncy beats, soaring vocals, and a harsh departure from the typical pop song structure. Charlie continues to be a force to be reckoned with with the future of how pop sounds. It's a song that exemplifies the simplicities in autotune, but the complexities in layering it super well. Now at the halfway mark, at number 25 comes Suf Jan Steven with his song Run Away With Me, a glistening, cyanic piece about leaving everything behind with someone and just losing yourself in an inescapable love. It's a beautiful electronic trial for Suf Jan Stevens and another depressing hit in his depressing discography hits. At number 24 is American indie rock band Car Seat Headrest with their album opener, Weightlifters. Once you get past the first minute of what sounds like a mosquito in the sound room, this is an anthemic rock victory. The band is able to coat this with so many instruments that lift this song up into just this bombastic intro track with a focused Will Toledo at the forefront leading them. Next at 23 is Drake and Rihanna's famous collaboration, except it's not theirs, but rather it's Neo Soul Legends. Gil Scott Heron with I'll Take Care of You. Graceful, polished, and effortless jazz piece. This is a song you can play at any time of the day and it'll just resonate you for the rest of the day. Following number 22 is 21 Savage and Metro Boomer with their collaboration Slide. This song just furthermore lets everyone know that these two have the most perfect chemistry and work ethic that it's unparalleled for villainous, haunting rap. 21 has all the fun in the world here and Metro Boomin is backed up with hi-hats and 808 mixtures that let the two just run in this Halloween-esque track. At number 21, I have Grimes with So Heavy, I Fell Through the Earth. This is an ethereal piece with incredible fadeaway mixing and eerie vocals from Mrs. Musk. I'll leave the recommendation with a suggestion from Grimes herself who's quoted saying, song best absorbed with headphones or a good sound as bass is essential. Last in the number 20 spot comes one of the hardest work Working singers in the industry today and that's Lady Gaga with her song Enigma. I love this piece especially in Chromatica because here she's just playing out not holding back on her singing. She's letting those vocals fly and fly with an infectious disco house production as well holding her at the pinnacle. It's groovy, it's thunderous, and it's Gaga and her pop best. Moving into the number 19 spot comes Victoria Monet with her disco breakup song experience. This is a piece that's just hungry for disco. It just wants to eat it all. It has disco nostalgia and dreamy vocals from Victoria and a well-assisted feature from Khalid who actually merges the two's performance to a nice little synchrony. At number 18 is Chambra Pops leading representer at this point with Perfume Genius and his song Your Body Changes Everything. The drums here are just absolutely immaculate with Michael clashing directly over them to create just this romantic juxtaposition triumph. Right after that, the number 17 spot is from the late Pittsburgh rapper Mac Miller with I Can See. This is a gorgeous record with faint Ariana Grande background vocals, these glossy strings and synthesizers, and just this all in all glimpse of what could have been with Mac's future with music. This song just floats like a dream and it really shows you Mac in his most vulnerable songwriting to date. At the 16th spot comes 1975 with another massive song to add to the discography and that's If You're Too Shy, Let Me Know. This is such a memorable pop rock song. It's It's got a grandiose chorus, a contagious 80s like B, and it's got this incredible insane saxophone finish. This is one of those songs that they should just be so, so, so proud of. Next at the number 15 spot is alternative metal band Deftones with their song Genesis. This is the heaviest non heavy metal song I've ever heard. It's dirty, filthy, and sick all at the same time. And it's a song that takes you into this different dimension of riffs and eclectic vocals. You just gotta wear your headphones, close your eyes, and just get ready to transcend with this one. At number 14 is the most quality representation of the late pop smoke and his sound, and that's Gotti from Jack Boys. This is a perfect exemplification of the zealous energy that pop was able to bring with one of the hardest 808s possible that just literally let the rapper ra just aggressively take charge and it leaves his voice sounding like two tectonic plates just colliding with one another. Travis can e can't even carry this one on his own. You cannot say pop and forget the smoke. At the 13th spot of the list, I have the artist of the year according to Spotify and that's Bad Bunny with his song La Noche de Anoche. There's plenty of Bad Bunny songs to really choose from <laughs> just this one year alone. I was gonna go with Sapphire, but I selected this last minute collaboration with Rosalia because this song is just a seamless blend between the two artists. It takes everything characteristic 
characteristic of Bad Bunny and everything characteristic of Rosalia and just blends them into this slower, intimate, and amorous work that fine-tunes itself into a nice Latin trap and reggaeton duet. At the number 12 spot comes American indie singer with her song Kyoto and that's Phoebe Bridgers. This is a hypnotic work with captivating lyrics about how beautiful, sad, happy, and complex life is all in all. It's a music piece of very emotional songwriting and with Phoebe just completely unguarded and letting herself go in order to keep moving in life. Coming in at number 11 is Miley Cyrus with one of her best songs to date, and that's Midnight Sky. This is one hell of a banger. Like, it's a disco, electro pop, reinvented song with complete dominance and control from Miley, who just came out of this right after the divorce, and this is a song that screams a rebirth of a singer. It's one of the most replayable songs of 2020, bar none. And now we finally get to the top 10 songs of 2020. And the first artist in this domain is Taylor Swift with her song Epiphany. Just it's just one of the most incredible storytelling works this year with Taylor maturing her sound into a phenomenal ambient work about realizing one's work. It's one of the most despondent tunes this year with Taylor showing that she still has the potential to move forward as an artist and still maintain her image in the industry as one of the most hardworking pop artists today. Next up in the number nine spot is Japanese singer songwriting Joji with his stunning and striking record Sanctuary. It mixes lo-fi, trap, electronica, R&B, soul, just all incorporated throughout the song. It's an enthusiastic crossover about love and depression. Joji has an enthralling vocal prowess here with a chorus that's euphonious and longs to be remembered at one time after a listen. In the eighth spot for 2020 comes Moses Sumney with his art pop grunge indie rock song Viral featuring Moses Sumney's signature falsetto and right around 10 various instruments. This is an art rock opera from the singer. It's glorious. It's magnificent. It's a song that beckons to be played at a loud environment. But above all else, it's an artist pouring his heart out into one hell of a trip. For the seventh spot, I have a group that's a Las Vegas local such as myself, and that's The Killers with Dying Breed. This is a song like an airplane. It just builds and builds and builds and then just takes off into the atmosphere. This is The Killers in their element with a scintillating crescendo of alternative and arena rock, and it just can't be ignored. It's a standout track from the group that's gonna be proudly, gladly shown, and it's gonna stand against the test of time, in my opinion. Closing out the number six spot is a relatively unknown artist who brings her own unique psychedelic sound to the scene, and that's 070 Shake with Terminal B. This is what the aliens are listening to. If you look up the word transcendence in the dictionary, this song will be in there. The relaxed and never overshadowing bass, Danielle's haunting and sweet vocal performance, the distorted synths, it all mishmashes to a song that really just transports you from one point and leaves you at another planet. And now into the top five songs this year, the best of the best. At number five, I've got a more obvious highlight, but I have Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. I feel like as if one just cannot dislike the song. When The Weeknd was first trying out with Pop with Beauty Behind the Madness and Starboy, I knew he had the potential and capability to make synth pop his genre at some point in the future. And this is it. This is what he needed to reach superstardom. It's one of the catchiest songs this year, and it's proven by breaking the record for the most amount of weeks in the top 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. It's vibrant, it's energy is unmatched, it's an inescapable 2020 song that Abel's gonna be long proud of. Next up for the fourth best song of 2020, I have the unequivocal rising pop star of the year, and that's Dua Lipa with her song Hallucinate. The energy and production of this song is unrivaled by any other pop song this year. It's, it's just disco house at its finest, with Dua just taking you like arms open into this intergalactic pop dimension right by the hand. You gotta experience gorgeous euphoria. The pre-chorus is just as good as the chorus. The chorus is amazing. The bridge is amazing. This is a 10 out of 10 pop song. For the third best song of the year, it's an artist who's gained plenty of recognition from her ambitious genre hybrid debut album. And it's Rina Sawayama with her song, Shut the Fuck Up. Never in my life would I think a pop artist would be able to create a new metal song and make it work, but Rina showed me otherwise because it's very much possible. It's a riotous blend of heavy metal and avant pop where Rina calls the shots through and through. It's abrasive, yet one of the most innovative and rule breaking songs to come out this whole year. And now, the second best song with excellence and grace and an ear for synth pop, it's French singer Christine and the Queens with her song, People I've Been Sad. What a song. What a song. Like, Chris's vocal control, range, and emotion here is unbelievable. It's a masterful song that expresses sorrow and pain in both English and a French verse switch up with one of the most tranquil and serene productions of the year from start to finish. It's synth pop in its best. And now, the top song of 2020. It's genius. It's a work of art. 
it's the caviar of caviars. It's Yves Tumor with his magnum opus piece, Kerosene, exclamation point. This is a five minute presentation of perfected experimental rock and psychedelic soul. It's one of the best ballads I've heard. And once the guitars start on this song, the song just refuses to lower its standard. This is passionate music making with an artist who just has a crap for blending various instrumentations into one giant amalgamation. This is the song of the year, video of the year as well if you check it out, but trust me, this song is just absolutely so beautiful. If you made it this far, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of 2020. And hopefully, like I said, if you even check out one or few or all the songs in this playlist, then by all means, I appreciate it. And hopefully you get something out of it as well. But with that, I will see you next time.